morning students so hope you are good and now it is a time to start our virtual classes so i am going to take ninth standard chemistry so let us start our first lesson or let's begin with our first lesson we know the name of the lesson that is matter in our surroundings so matter in our surroundings so look around us we can see a large number of things there will be so if you are in the classroom you may see chalk pieces table benches desks or outside we can see there will be stones sand or water or the oxygen that we inhale or carbon dioxide that we exhale all these are the things that we see around us these all the things together the scientists are called them or these all the things together we can call as matter so this matter this matter has some properties what are those properties all the matter that occupies space and has mass or we can define matter in a way that anything which occupies space and has mass we can call the mass matter so there will be different types of matter we can see around us so our indian philosophers ancient indian philosophers they classify or they classify the matter into five elements they classify the matter into five elements they are air earth water fire and sky so together all these five elements together we can call it as panchatattva so we can call them as panchatattva panchatattva is nothing but according to indian philosophers all the matter contains five elements all the matter means it is applicable for living and non living things so it is also observed that even the greek philosophers also they have reached almost the same result or they have also reached the same observation so now we have to learn the classification of matter so when we are classifying the matter modern scientists they are taking the criteria or they are classifying the matter based on their physical and chemical properties they are classifying on the physical and chemical properties so in this lesson or our first lesson we are going to learn the classification of matter based on their physical properties based on their physical properties so in that first one we are going to learn about is matter is made up of particles we can say that matter is made up of particles so here there was a belief that matter or a thing that is continuous like a block of wood we know if you have taken a wood it will be a single piece so later it has been it has been proved that matter is not continuous matter is not continuous it is made up of different particles just imagine a heap of salt a heap of salt when you are observing the heat of the heap of salt we can see that that is a heap but it is made up of like millions of or very very large number of salt particles it is made up of very very large number of salt particles so we can say that matter is made up of particles so make sure that or understand the first thing what we are learning here that is matter is made up of particles matter is made up of particles so to prove this and it disprove what the other concepts that means matter is continuous let us go through an activity for doing that activity we need a 
100 ml beaker we can take a 100 ml beaker in that 100 ml beaker more than half parts more than half of that beaker we can fill it with water more than half of this beaker we can fill it with water after filling it with water means for more than half of it is filled with water just take a spoon of sugar or so just add to it add stearics when we are adding a stearic we can see we can see that it goes dissolved so one point i have is that when we are fill the water just we have to mark its level we have to mark the water level so after adding the sugar or salt you have to check which is the level <coughs> whether the level of water is increased or decreased or remain unchanged so most of the students they may think that we have added the sugar to beaker so you may think that there will be increase in the water level but in real or in reality there will be no increase in water level why there is no increase in water level the reason is clear what is the reason matter is made up of particles so and also we will come to know that there will be space between the particles so that space will be filled with other particles so it is clear that matter is made up of particles and there will be space between the particles hope it is clear so we came to know that matter is made up of particles and now we should know what will be the size of these particles what will be the size of these particles let us try another experiment to understand the size of the particles so let's take any one hundred ml of beaker hundred ml hundred ml of beaker we can take and in this beaker we can fill it with water so we have a hundred ml beaker and that beaker is filled with water take two or three crystals of potassium permanganate note the name potassium permanganate as you are learning chemistry try to know the molecular formula of potassium permanganate it is kml of potassium permanganate in the coming lessons we will in learn detail about the formula but this number the formula of potassium permanganate is kml of and its color is purple color so we have taken a beaker of water 100 ml beaker that contains water to this beaker we have added two or three crystals of the permanganate so as we have added potassium permanganate to this water the color of the solution has been changed now the color is purple color from this purple color water or purple color potassium permanganate solution take one measure one ten ml and add to another beaker so that beaker also we have to make up it to hundred ml by adding 90 ml of water so we can observe that even in that second beaker also there will be purple color so again from that second beaker we can take ten ml and add to another beaker and make that beaker that solution also to hundred ml by adding so you can continue it for five to eight times so even the last beaker also we can observe the color of potassium permanganate that means there will be light purple color is observed even in the last beaker also from this what we can understand so we have two or three crystals of potassium permanganate we have taken and that will be enough to give the color to nearly about 1000 liters of water that will be enough to give nearly 1000 liters of water so you can imagine that what will be the size of the particles of water two or three crystals of potassium permanganate contains that will be enough to dilute nearly 1000 ml of water 
thousand milliliters of water. So we will come to know, or we will come to know that the size of the particle is very very small. Or if you have taken a crystal of potassium permanganate, that contains millions of potassium permanganate particles. So to prove it, the potassium permanganate may not be available in your home, but there is a dead it may be available in your home. So you can do the same experiment, you can take 100 ml of water, to this 100 ml of water we can add 2 or 3 drops of, or you can add nearly 1 number of Dettol. And we can smell as we are adding 2 or 3 drops of Dettol, we can get its color or we can get the smell. So if the Dettol gives the smell that means the particles of Dettol is present in that water. So again as we have done this experiment here in the same way from that uh, made up Dettol solution, take 100 ml, add to another beaker and make up to 100 ml and we can do it a number of times. As we are doing it in a number of times, even, even you repeat it 3 or 4 times, after that also there will be the smell of Dettol. As we are getting that smell of Dettol there, definitely we can say that that part also contains the particles of <coughs> Dettol. That also contains the particles of Dettol. So it is very much clear that matter is made up of particles and size of